8.2, resource use in society. So the renewability of natural capital has implications for its sustainable use. Basically, if it's more renewable, um, it's easier to use it sustainably. Whereas if it's less renewable, it's harder to use it sustainably. And then there's that sort of in-between replenishable things like groundwater, um, et cetera. So that really, that rate of replacement is what affects the renewability of different resources. Um, just like all things, the value of this natural capital is dynamic. Um, and that value isn't necessarily only going to be like a cash value where there's other, you know, cultural values, intrinsic value. Um, there's recreational value, you know, lots of different things um, that you can look back to. Uh, topic 1.4, uh, I believe, has a lot of that. Um, they say 1.1 as well, a little bit more on 1.4. Um, so renewable natural capital uh, is generated or replaced uh, at, a, at a rate that's pretty equal to the rate that it's being used, right? That's what sustainable means. If you use it faster than it's being replaced, that's unsustainable. Um, so with this renewable natural capital, they, they renew so quickly that we can use them pretty easily, right? They either restock themselves by growing or they're driven by solar energy, um, which is how the water cycle works. Um, and a lot of times these are the biotic or the living components of the ecosystem. Um, Non-renewable capital is just going to take way longer for it to generate, right? So we could sustainably if we're thinking about the time scale in which it takes to create coal. Or, you know, a technocentrist might say that we're using coal temporarily right now until we develop technologies that move us beyond coal. So it's it's okay to use it um, because it's it's sort of a means to get us beyond it is a, a sort of technocentric viewpoint on this sort of thing. Um, but ultimately, um, we need to, to think about whether or not this is sustainable, right? Um, and of course, sustainability is, is uh, not just about the environment, it's also about the economic activity, and then also about the people um, that are living in the system too. Um, and then we have the idea of of, of looking at how renewable, how, how much your resource is regenerating to determine using it, um, if you're using it unsustainably, right? So if growth is growing, uh, the stock of natural capital will increase. Um, and then if the growth is less than the harvest, the stock will decrease. This is all pretty obvious, but a lot of people uh, that are actually in these businesses sort of just think about, you know, the profit side of things short term. Um, so uh, we have the, the distinction here as well between natural capital and natural income, which is just like really a little subtle. Um, but you could just imagine that capital is, is everything that's available, right? That's like the, the total is the capital. And then income is, is the the stuff we're actually using, the growth or yield. Um, yield is what you take. Um, so it could be the growth or the, the lumber that we're actually taking is our natural income. Um, if, we, if we don't take it, then it's just still part of the, the natural capital. Um, so if we are using unsustainable practices in our extraction or, or transport and processing, you know, we could affect the amount of the resource and really degrade it over time. Um, and so that's why it's important to, you know, be more efficient in our systems so that we're not, you know, needlessly wasting materials. Um, natural capital provides goods, which are tangible things that we can touch and use versus um, services, which you can't really touch, but you know they're the important things that the ecosystem um, does for us. Uh, things like flood control, things like providing clean oxygen to breathe. Um, trees also are really good at picking up particulate matter, um, as we were talking about in topic six. Um, other services include uh, water cycling and filtration. Um, taking carbon out of the atmosphere is a huge one. Um, I didn't really touch on goods because I feel like goods are the ones that people usually think about, right? This is the stuff that you actually are using. Um, so a good little task to be would be to identify and describe some ecological services you see over here. Um, and of course, this is a dynamic, um, a dynamic idea, dynamic concept. Um, so we could see how the the price value of uranium changes over time. 
Um, and actually this price value is probably related to our other values we might have, right? There's probably some cultural or social things that are happening as well. If you know your history, you might know there was like a big anti-nuclear power movement that happened in the um, 70s and 80s. So you kind of see a resulting um, change in prices. Um, there's also, you know, the, the Soviet Union falling around here. So probably that has an effect. Um, a lot of different um, factors can influence the, the price or the value of things. Um, in the video we watched, we were looking at potash um, up in Utah and how um, it's used for like fuel and now it's used as like fertilizer, etc. Um, so some of your um, uh, some of your skills and applications would be to outline an example of how renewable and non-renewable capital is mismanaged. Um, so we just had the example of the potash. We also talked about water in the West is a huge one. You could think about the dams out here um, and you know some of those dams being more or less sustainable than other ones. Um, and then you should be able to explain how the value of, of different goods can change over time um, due to economic factors, due to social factors, cultural factors, etc. Um, so in this case, coltan is used uh, in technology, I believe. Um, so as our technology explodes, you know that value increases. But then you also have issues with like human rights. Um, you know, maybe you've heard about blood diamonds. It's all very complicated stuff, and that's why ESS is not just a science, right? Um, so a great international mindedness is, is all those cultural differences, which lead to um, different views on natural capital, right? Um, in the US, you know, like we build a lot of houses. Well, I mean, everyone builds their houses with wood, but um, there's cultural differences, right? So you go to like Norway and they respect trees so much that they won't even like urinate on a tree when they're hiking in the woods. Um, those cultural differences really will impact how those societies use their natural resources. Um, again, shout out to Mr. Kramer for his slideshows.